welcome ladies and gentlemen to this last episode of this first season of uh, potentially the only season depending on how the views have been going at the time of this recording um, by the time you guys are seeing this of Arthurian D&D Explained um, like I said before I would just I just decided that I was gonna um, create a base trial season and this is the last episode they're in so Depending on how you guys like it, we may do another one, we may not. Anyway, in today's episode, we are going to be uh, covering, uh, in this last episode, we're going to be covering uh, a couple of things, just a couple of points that I wanted to kind of point out um, about the Arthurian world, at least the one that I've created, and uh, other ones that you may, uh, other adaptations that you may work on and may use. Uh, and just some things that some people don't really think about when they're doing an Arthurian game. Um, but yeah, uh, buckle up and let's get into it. Anyway, uh, so the first and foremost, the thing I want to point out is that, and I've said this several times before, but D&D, um, like any other interpretive and collaborative storytelling game or action or what have you is malleable it's flexible so i do want to just point out that you can take all the things i've said and either use them or throw them out entirely and do your own thing um if you want to make an arthurian world where it's set in the feywild and everybody plays pixies and all that different stuff that's entirely up to you, and you can totally do that. Um, it may not be balanced or anything like that, but hey, do what makes you happy. Um, do what's going to make your players happy, specifically. Um, D&D in general um, is, and specifically an Arthurian world, um, is old enough and is varied enough that it, it lends itself to being able to be molded into something different. Unlike... Like with movies where there are people out there who just want to have purist and uh, kind of um, want to have very traditional kind of ways of doing things. There are all kinds of different uh, interpretations you can do with D&D in this regard. Um, and with that in mind, I do want to point out the second part of this because this is going to be a shorter episode. Um, the second portion that I wanted to point out was that... Yeah, there's Albion, England, there's Midgard, Scandinavia, and there's Hibernia, which is Ireland and the Irish Isles. But there's also a lot of other places that you can play in. You don't necessarily, you can play in an Arthurian world, but not necessarily play in the traditional Arthurian setting. And that makes me really happy. I've wanted to do like a, uh, um, an Arabian Nights kind of campaign for a while. Um, I just don't know a lot about the... Uh, that kind of mythology but i've been doing some research to try and figure out if that's something i'd want to do but yeah no you could totally play in an arthurian world and play in like the arabian nights uh and like do like an aladdin type of thing where you're playing in the empire in my version of the empire of the crescent moon um down in like north africa and arabia um or you could go far east you could do like in my world uh the empire of the north star um where you're doing more of a, um, a Germanic or a, um, an Eastern European kind of campaign. That's kind of cool. The point being is that this world, despite the fact that there's only a small section of the world that's been shown in large part, it's a huge world, and you can do whatever you want with it. As long as you're, obviously, as long as you're not, like, broadcasting the game to the world, um, because of weird copyright things obviously um you can if you're just doing your own game you can do whatever you want just keep that in mind and uh yeah um just have fun do your thing enjoy it take either take what i've said with a grain of salt or don't take it at all or take it wholeheartedly the point of all of this the, this series has been for me to kind of share with you got share with you guys a little bit of what i do in this regard but I want to make it perfectly clear at the end of this, now that we're at the end of this season, that this is all hearsay. 
you can do whatever you want to do. And far be it from me to tell you how you should run your games. I just wanted to provide these things to basically be able to give you my interpretation and tell you what I do and tell you and fill you in on how I do things. Um, take it as you will. Don't take it at all. Or take a little bit at a time. That's up to you. Anyway, folks, um, thank you so much for joining me on this season of Arthurian D&D Explained. Like I said at the beginning of the episode, if you if we've gotten, by the time you guys are seeing this, um, which is probably going to be by like mid-January of, <clears throat> of 2023, if we've gotten enough views and uh, enough uh, um, likes and what have you, and if there's enough interest, I may end up doing a season two of this. Um, if not, then um, it was fun while it lasted. I had a great time making it. Um, it really is up to you guys. If you guys want to see more of it, let me know down in the comments. Tell me what you what you want to see. Um, and I look forward to hearing from you. Anyway, folks, thank you so much. I'm Michael Shockman. I've been your host and commentator. If you haven't already, please be sure to like, leave a like, sh uh, like and uh, on the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to ring the bell icon so you never miss an episode. Last but not least, please be sure to check out the links down in the description. You know what they do, you know where they go, you know what to do. Thank you so much, guys, and until next time, remember as always, keep it real, keep it safe, keep it healthy, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Later, everybody.